I just want to thank you all for coming tonight. I really appreciate you showing up. Um, it actually was a beautiful day, so it wasn't too hard to get out, I'm sure. Um, so I'm kind of new to the uh, formerly utilized sites remedial action program. I'm uh, Amy Gaskill. I'm an outreach specialist, um, 40 years of experience in that field. So I'm excited to come up here and join you all and this wonderful team we have at Niagara Falls Storage Site uh, to share with you the activities that we have going on uh, going on there. Um, if you didn't know already, the restrooms are in the back. Um, and there's plenty of treats up here in the front. I see a whole basket full of cookies still, so if you want one, please take one. Um, and I uh, just want to let you know we're going to get started, uh, have a couple of people give presentation um, to kind of walk you through what's going on currently. Um, and, then, uh, and then we'll get into, um, after, after we make the presentation, then we'll have our experts standing at the posters again for some more face-to-face, one-on-one, conversation on questions that may form while you while we're giving our presentation okay so because this really is an information session for us to share with you uh, what's going on to reintroduce you all to us since we haven't been in person in, in a while with COVID so um, and with that said we also are looking at a meeting in March uh, an information session you'll be getting an email if you have not signed up with your email address um, please do so before you leave tonight. Um, leave your email address and I'll add you to our uh, contact email to send invitations and updates. And to also to let you know the presentation that you're going to see tonight will be posted on our website. And the last slide on here will be the address to that, web, that website so you can find the presentation. And we're also videotaping um, the speakers up here tonight because some people couldn't make it tonight and we want them to be able to hear the presentation. Um, so please sit back, relax, um, uh, and uh, We'll get started with our spiel. I want to in introduce to you Dave Romano. He is our uh, Buffalo District Deputy Engineer. Um, and uh, he's going to say a few words before we jump into the full presentation. It's, uh, it, it's real brief. And it, it's just to really say thank you for so many people showing up this evening. I'm the Deputy District Engineer. I'm Colonel Krug, the District Commander Civilian Deputy. So he was called away for mandatory army training this evening at Fort Drum and couldn't make it. Um, but he sends, he, he wishes he could be here, wants to say thanks. And uh, he, he charged us really with two or three things this evening. One is to be absolutely transparent on everything we're doing on Niagara Falls storage site. Nothing we do on that site's top secret. So we wanna demonstrate and show to you exactly what's going on. And then we also wanna hear from you your, your information, your questions, your tips, what's happening in the community, all these things help our project. And I know I wanted to thank, I, I think we may have members of the Tuscarora Tribal Nation here, uh, some elected representatives from the local, state, and, and federal agencies and, and representatives or members of their office. And, and the community makes up a partnership that we've seen at the Niagara Falls Storage Site. And these partnerships, they're, they are, absolutely essential to a successful project and it's because of that two-way flow of communication so the next point I, I want you to understand that we've assembled on this project it, it's one of our highest priorities in the buffalo district we go from messina new york all the way to just west of toledo ohio it's the lower great lakes we call it we've got about nine of these sites active and three of them, to include this one, are all about the same stage right now. One of them's actually a little farther ahead in the remediation. But on this site in particular, and those that are in remediation, we've assembled the best of the best. From here locally, the majority of us from the Buffalo District have been born and raised in the region, to include my boss, Colonel Krug. Um, we've assembled regional and national experts. And many of our technical experts here in Buffalo have expertise, not just on the sites in our, our area, but across, across the nation and some of them overseas. They've all been charged with not just being transparent with you to listen and get your feedback, but safety drives the day. 
Safety drives the day for Niagara Falls Storage Site. It, it drives the decisions we make to ensure we're protecting human health of the, the region, the community, the environment, the workers on the site, uh, those Corps of Engineers employees that are going to reside on the site, you know, for their day job at the trailers, that's going to drive our decisions. Um, and, and honestly, we have good news to report. I know it's been a while since we've talked, but we're moving from the investigation phase to the remedial design, remedial planning, and remedial action phase. We're, we're, we're doing what we said we were going to do when we signed the record of decision. We're going to be moving material off-site. And we've done very well with funding. We, we have a lot to be thankful for in terms of the local community support and the support we get from the administration and congressional representatives. We've, we've operated unconstrained, is, is the term I use for Niagara Falls storage site here the past year. We're able to award some very large contracts to carry us through this fiscal year and, and, and show you some of the progress. Um, so it, we actually, we thought this, we were gonna call this an information session where you get up and you check out the posters and you meet the technical team. I don't think we anticipated this many people. So the screen's a little small. We're gonna get you the slides though. And, and the presenters, Brent Lespot, our project manager, and, and, and Jeff, our, our technical lead on the Niagara Falls storage site, they're gonna give a presentation and kind of orient you to the posters and the experts. But I really encourage you, it, when you have questions and comments, engage with them we, we we really brought them here so that we could get the community to meet our team one-on-one -on -one. Um, they take a lot of pride in what they do and i know they're ready to to give you the rundown and answer questions or concerns so on behalf of colonel krug and i thanks for taking the time today i, I really appreciate the interest and in, in you spending a few moments with our team and on that note brent why don't you get us started thank you Everybody can hear me okay? No, it's, it's a little higher. Sound good? Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna take you through a little bit of a rundown. I got the first part of the presentation here. Uh, just the ag overall agenda. We're gonna touch in on the site. Um, one of the things I'm really excited to talk about is our project team and the uniqueness of that. Um, Project delivery, we're going to get into what these phases mean, and we'll, there's going to be a couple slides that get into that. So hopefully, and certainly that's something we want you guys to come over and ask questions on if you have any confusion as we go through. And then also we're going to touch in on the vicinity properties and our Lake Ontario Ordinance Works under our FUDS program. So uh, we have slides to get all those. So this is our NFSS Integrated Technical Office. This slide is one of the ones I'm most excited to present because your know, uniqueness to this project is is that the team that you're going to see and talk to and meet tonight uh, is 100 percent dedicated to this project that really puts a lot of oomph behind everything we're going to do as an organization as we go to execute this project um, and that's that's a unique situation uh, you know we we're basically 100 percent laser focused on executing this project all right so this is this is just to get everybody oriented and what we're looking at with the site you see these boxes here phase one phase two phase three um, these are all different remedial phases in, within NFSS. Uh, phase one, for well, for everyone, I guess for phase one, phase one is the cleanup of everything outside of the interim waste containment structure, uh, which is tied to phase two. But that, so everything around that site is what we just awarded the contract on uh, in August, and what we're kind of motivating the, this conversation really is just to talk about the action coming at site, coming to the site. Um, that contract is underway. We're working through the work plans, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit very soon in a different slide. Uh, so everything outside the site, or I should say outside the IWCS, is what that phase one is, that cleanup phase. Phase two is the IWCS. There's the hot zone, the high activity zone within the IWCS. As you see, I don't know if everybody can see this, but that portion, phase two, is 91% of the radiation risk, and it's 1% of the IWCS volume. So it's high, high level of risk, but very low volume of the overall project site. Um, that phase right now, we're in the midst of a remedial design and working towards that. And then phase three would be the remainder of the IWCS, and that's the low activity waste. And that's a, a huge portion, 99% of the bulk of the volume is, is there, so. 
And then this is just another representation of that. Um, this is kind of information that's littered across. Uh, Jeff is standing next to one that has our little bit of the time frame, time frame for, uh, for the phases. I'll be standing over there after the presentation if everybody wants to come over and get more clarity on this, but I know this is probably hard to see, but uh, come on over to the poster at that point. All right, for phase one, uh, as I had mentioned, uh, we awarded the contract in, in August this year. Uh, currently, we're working through the work plans with the contractor. Uh, we're, we got a first set of those in. We're reviewing those. Uh, and that process is going to continue on until late winter. Uh, and then we're gonna, with the anticipation is that we're going to be out in the field doing cleanup in the spring of 24. So this is fast approaching. We're working through that process. Um, phase one is very much alive. Um, and so essentially, what I want to note on this is, is that before we get out into the field and do the remediation, we will hold, as Amy had mentioned, we're going to hold another meeting. That'll be to share the work plan information and get everybody up to speed on what we're going to be doing going forward. So uh, that's a little bit of the timeline for phase one coming up. All right. And uh, this, this slide right here, the biggest thing that you st to speak to on this slide is, is our number one concern for for everything on the site, number one priority is safety. Safety is the, the, the thing that drives all things, whether it's for our remedial design or everything else we're doing on the site. Um, so that combination of safety being the highest priority and then us listening to the community over the years. Uh, the thing to mention on here is that our transportation route, which is yet to be determined, that's gonna be a work plan the contractor is gonna provide us for phase one. Um, and that as mentioned in that time frame. Uh, the, the two things we know is that we, the community has told us that we are not to go through the Tuscarora Nation or by the schools with the waste. So that has been fully um, passed, that information has been passed on to our contractor. They've acknowledged that that's going to be part of the work plan. And like I said, when we get that final work plan and approve it, that'll be something we'll share and much more information on transportation to come. But those two are just things that are locked in. And then just here, just kind of for a little bit of context of what you'll be seeing with phase one as far as the trucking and the increased on volume on the roads. Um, you know, the necessary and very good work that Modern does for the community. Uh, we just, on their website, we learned that, you know, there's three, or this shows here that 635 trucks of trash per week go through the community and end up at Monitor. They accept that. For context, for the 16 week period that we're gonna be out in the field remediating, remediating NFSS, cleaning it up, um, we are looking at about the same number, 640 trucks. So it just gives a little bit of context on the, the amount of volume, how much you'll see increased on the roads when we get that transportation approved, transportation plan approved, uh, and just you know for a little bit of context. So, all right, now I'm going to hand the mic over to Jeff Hall. Hey everybody, again Jeff Hall, Chief of uh, NFSS ITO. Um, so phase one and, and even phase three to a certain extent is kind of foods are at butter, bread and butter for us. You know, it's uh, excavating material, packaging it safely, get it on the road safely, and get it into an approved facility. So what I've got here is a few photos from uh, a few of our sites, Tonawanda Landfill and uh, Lucky, and actually there's a couple photos from Lindy in there. So I'm just going to just kind of show you like generally what's going to be happening for uh, the phase one remediation activities. So here's a excavator excavating material and waste from that uh, uh, shell excavation area. There's another photo of uh, similar. This one's got a uh, intermodal container where they're they're loading material directly from the excavation. Um, over here on the upper right hand corner is an example of an air monitoring station, making sure that we're protect you know protecting the public. As you can see, the Tonawana landfill, the the residents was right were right across the fence there, so we want to make sure that nothing was getting over there. But backing up a little bit, we always have um, worker protection and, and air, air monitoring locally around our excavation areas. So we're always, you know, protecting the public, or I'm sorry, protecting our workers, which in turn also helps protect the public. So if our workers are safe, that means people on that perimeter are safe. But like I said, we also have the monitoring at the extents to do that. Um, the bottom photos, kind of an example, there's kind of different conveyances there. Uh, the first couple are rail cars, the other one in the back's a roll off. But, and we're still working with our, our, our contractor in Virofix, uh, working on the plans, what kind of conveyance, what kind of trucks are gonna be, uh, and where the material's gonna go to. But this just shows you how we typically um, package material. Everything's always lined. Um, so you see this front end loader's uh, 
pulling material from a pile somewhere, put it into the, the lined roll out, the lined uh, rail car, sorry. And then here's a, a, a photo of where they're getting ready to push the, or put the tarp over, I'm sorry. Some of I call them burrito bags. But essentially we cover them at the top with, uh, so it's encapsulating the waste. And then there's another tarp that'll go on before it goes on the road. So essentially making sure it's, it's leaving the site uh, per, per all, all DOT regulations and also with an eye on protection of the public. So phase two and three are, are focused on the uh, cleaning up the interim waste containment structure. Um, so I rec like we've mentioned before, our record of decision is everything goes um, and we're moving the complete con the contents and shipping them out of state. Um, part of that, I guess uh, Brent mentioned, phase two has begun and we awarded a contract to Jacobs Engineering. Um, couple years or a year and a half ago and they're working through the design right now but this is kind of a reminder of what the, what's in the IWCS it was built by the Department of Energy to contain uh, contain uh, atomic air waste um, it's 10 acres in area it's about 34 feet above grade 10 to 15 feet below grade it was designed to safely contain the high active high activity radioactive waste and what it does is it protects prevents uh, rainwater infiltration migration to groundwater and also retards the, the radon gas as it uh, is generated from the waste materials. Um, key takeaway is the, the IWCS is still performing as intended as it's safe for the, for the workers on site, for us, and also for the public. Um, let's move to the next, the next slide, please. So here's a, a rendering of uh, a conceptual design that our engineers are working through. Um, the full 30% design is due to us this month. We'll do our review. And uh, uh, also, we're going to do a value engineering study. And then once that value engineering study, we'll move into the preliminary design, which is the 60%. So this rendering kind of shows what kind of infrastructure we're going to need to do the phase two remediation. Um, right here is the, is the footprint of the IWCS. And here is where the high activity K, uh, K65 waste is located. So that facility is going to be constructed to prevent the release of radon gas uh, to the atmosphere. Um, and I'll, and uh, there's going to be uh, carbon beds and um, particulate filters to filter all that air locally at the excavation area and also within that building. It's likely we're going to have remote operated equipment while we're doing that work because just to, again, protect our workers. Um, and also that structure is also going to protect the workers and the rest of this facility. And like I said before, you know, protect the workers, you're also protecting the, the public. So all work we do is always going to be in accordance with, you know, preventing any release of, um, uh, above uh, any uh, air limits that we are set to have. Um, one feature of the design is that our engineers are working towards making sure that all truck traffic never really enters clean, or I'm sorry, it always stays on clean areas and doesn't go into into dirty areas. So, you know, likely trucks will come in this, fir this first gate. They'll, they'll, you know, if they brought in, em you know, empty trailers, they'll drop them, come up and pick up a full, uh, a full trailer. So, the w you know, so I obviously, so the idea is that the truck never ends a enters a dirty zone. We don't have to worry about washing it. The containers that they're picking up will have been uh, scanned and cleaned before they get on the road. Um, so essentially what this process facility is doing is as the waste gets retrieved, it gets going to get slurried to this waste stabilization facility where it'll be down blended with some fly ash in Portland, basically turned into a big con concrete monolith inside of a, a steel cask in which will be sealed. And that's to lower the activity and make it safe to travel on the road. That material all is going to go down to West Texas for, for permanent uh, burial. Can you go to the next one, please? All right, some of this is a re rehash, but just kind of gives you a, uh, a feeling for our schedule. Um, so like I said, the 30% design is due uh, to us this month. We'll provide that review, do a value engineering study, make sure we're doing everything safely, most economically, and also just like most efficiently. So that's where that v value engineering study is really important. After that, the contractor will work on the 60% design, which is the preliminary, and that's due in January of 2025. We expect 100% to be done um, by 2027, but we're not waiting on the design to start our, our remediation plan or renal action planning for the follow-on phases. We've already started doing that now, coming up with some acquisition plans, 
how we're going to break this up into, you know, is it multiple contracts, one contract, what phases are. Um, we're also considering uh, tasking our, our engineer to break out some of the maybe infrastructure work like roads, warehouse building, some of the simpler structures and try to get ahead of that and start building that before we're ready to start building the big plant. So we're going to start seeing some construction over the next couple of years and we have the capacity in the in the, the phase one contracts uh, that the SATOC, we did a single award task order contract that we awarded to EnviroFix, which is the first task orders for phase one. The rest of the task order is going to be supporting the design effort, potentially with some geotechnical borings um, coming up maybe next year. And then, like I said, some civil, civil work, including maybe the access, exit and entrance roads to the site and then some of those structures. All right, new topic. So yeah, we, we finished talking about um, the remediation at the site, but just kind of wanted to remind folks that we've been monitoring the site for, uh, since 1997, we sample radioactivity in air, groundwater, surface water, and sediments. We continue doing that. Uh, different types of events quarterly, sometimes it's radon. Um, you know, once a year we do radon monitoring at the cap. We do regular groundwater sampling, surface water, sediment. Um, uh, continue to show that there's no off-site migration, the public, that the site's still safe to the public and safe to our workers. Um, over time, our monitoring gonna ch is going to be modified slightly, and some of that alludes to the, uh, my original discussion about during remediation. We're going to have work zone monitors for air um, for our workers to protect them. So we're going we're gonna to be beefing up and changing our monitoring. That's gonna, we're always going to be doing that overall surveillance, making sure nothing's going off site, but also be doing more, more um, uh, detailed and more uh, timely monitoring to help protect our workers and react when, when we're making, uh, making decisions in the field. Next topic, vicinity properties. So these are properties that are outside of the Niagara Falls storage site, outside of the federal, the federal property. These are, there's 27 vicinity properties, all but these one, two, three, four, five are, are, are not active right now. So these are the ones that we're actively working or they're in our, our purview, I should say. Um, just to kind of reorientate folks, this is the Niagara Falls storage site. This is chemical waste management. And this, uh, this property here is the town of Lewiston. So with the exception of VPX, all the others are located on CWM's property. So like we mentioned before, this is a, this maybe backing up a little bit, but this, uh, this we're trying to just kind of cover all the different activities that are going on at the site. We're not going into, into a lot of gory details on it, but we will be having meetings coming up. And this, so this is kind of giving a preview of some of these vicinity property meetings. So vicinity property H prime, like I said, it's on chemical waste management property. We've completed our investigations. We're finishing up the circle of documentation and we will present our, uh, our findings and a proposed plan. Um, coming up next year, so that'll be a public hearing. We'll be able to take uh, comments from the public at that time, also in writing and in, uh, in, in person. Vicinity Property X, we're wrapping up the preliminary assessment and site inspection report, plan to release that and have a public information session on that one next year. And there's no activity currently on Vicinity Properties E, E Prime, and G, and those are the other uh, chemical waste management properties. All right, how we all started is Lake Ontario Ordnance Works was the the TNT plant that was stood up during World War II, which Niagara Falls Storage is, is located on one of the parcels within that, that former uh, TNT plant. So we've just got a little bit of work to do on Lake Ontario on this work. That's, um, that work is not done on our food foods wrap. That's the Defense Environmental Restoration Program, formerly used defense sites or DERP FUDs. We've been, we've been working on this site since 1998. We completed several cleanup actions. And really what we're, we're down to some administrative uh, cleanup. Um, whereas we mentioned many years ago that we've investigated everything, all the hazards that are, uh, there's no further action. However, we need to document in a proposed plan. So that's, that's what the, that's actually our next meeting is gonna be in, likely in January. We'll have a proposed plan hearing for the, to close out the last uh, project for the Lake Ontario Ordinance Works. All right, it's my turn. <laughs> As Jeff was kind of going into a little bit of detail on some of the meetings and face-to-face -face points that we're going to have opportunities with you guys, um, 
you see here Lake Ontario Ordinance Works. We're looking at a January release of that, and we'll have a, a document for decision, which will come out uh, in a uh, news from the core email. So if you haven't put your email address on our list up here, please do so. That's how we keep in touch with you guys, and we tell you what's coming up and what's going on. And everything that we put out is put on our website. And uh, I'll give you that address here in a second. It's kind of long, but uh, um, we'll, we'll get it to you. Um, and it's in every one of our communications that we send out as well. Uh, another, uh, another meeting that we're having, and I think I've talked to a number of you uh, tonight, that in March we're looking at another information session like this where we'll share the work plans that are de being developed now uh, for this phase one uh, remediation that we've been talking about tonight. Uh, so that'll uh, be an opportunity to share with you what exactly the activities that are going to be taking place to move those materials off site. Um, and no material will move until we've shared that work plan with you so you know what's going on on the site in your backyard here. Uh, and then we're also looking at um, an H prime proposed plan. This is a formal hearing that we're going to have uh, in the springtime next year. And then, uh, and then we have another public information session coming up for one of the vicinity properties, uh, property X. Um, and then we'll go into phase two remediation where we'll share some more information about how we're getting ready to uh, move the materials that are inside that, um, inside that uh, interim waste um, structure. So those are, those are the meetings that are coming up. Just wanted to, we're kind of, you know, scheduling out here for your eyes to see uh, way out into 25 so you can kind of see what's coming up, okay? And this is how you can stay in touch with us and learn more. We're all on, we're on social media. If you have an iPhone, you can uh, queue in on this, uh, and we'll leave this up here. You can queue in on the QR code and bring it up on your phone, so it'll take you to um, our website, which is right here. Uh, so if you have a way to take a picture of this, we'll leave it up so you can uh, take a picture when we uh, when we're let you go here tonight. So. Um, so I want to thank you all again for coming tonight. Uh, we're going to have folks over here standing at the posters again. Um, so you can spend some time with them, talk to them. Uh, most everything you saw on here is on a, on a poster board over here that our folks can speak to directly. Um, and you can get a closer view um, up there next on the boards. Um, and this will be posted on this website, uh, so you can go there and get a closer look at it, understand it, study it. Uh, please reach out to me with any questions. I monitor this FoosWrap email account every day. I go in there every day and empty that inbox, and I will get to your question as soon as I see it, okay? I am taking a couple of days of vacation early next week, but you know, beyond that, I look at this uh, all the time. So if you guys need to reach me, you can. And I also uh, check the voicemail at that phone number on a daily basis, okay? So I thank you again for coming. Please join our folks at the poster. And I see too many cookies sitting up here, so please come grab one for the road. Um, and uh, thank you. <laughs>